Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, everyone, I will present today um, as a research associate uh, results of um, uh, an investigation I did last year in collaboration with uh, Redco, um, part of uh, ATEX Group. And the uh, presentation is um, on the laboratory inv investigation is a laboratory investigation on the durability of tape joints in exterior air barrier applications. I first give or I first start with a brief introduction how we uh, came to this subject. Uh, so a few years ago, I started my research, and uh, the main question at that time for us was uh, how to make uh, air tightness uh, easier in uh, timber frame construction, as we uh, see that it's a complex. Um, um, problem of sealing all the joints uh, with commonly uh, used interior air barriers, as you can see on this slide, uh, making the air tightness at the inside of the building envelope, as we traditionally do in Europe, is um, related to some disadvantages because we have many joints at the inside, which make it labor intensive to seal them. It also uh, involves the risk for later penetrations as um, Inhabitants can penetrate this air barrier at the inside. Also, we have complex joints at the level of intermediate floors, for example, where we uh, need to use uh, waiting foils, uh, foils or other uh, solutions, or, for example, the need for service cavities to avoid penetration of the air barrier. Uh, all these uh, issues uh, make the interior air barrier rather complex. And the idea at that time was to move the interior air barrier to the outside of the building envelope and investigate the feasibility of exterior air barriers, which are not uh, commonly uh, spread in Europe, which was at that time rather new. Uh, making the air barrier at the outside uh, makes it possible to see um, from the outside um, all the connections, and it also um, makes a number of joints um, uh, much smaller, as we don't have uh, intermediate floors or uh, inner walls sections. But the question at that time, time was, what's the feasibility of this system? The first uh, question is the practical feasibility, and we looked uh, to Norway at that time, it was 2008, uh, which was the only country uh, where there was some experience on exterior air barrier. Because in Norway, there is a tendency to make the uh, wind tightness more tight. Uh, in fact, they make an air tight barrier at the inside, but also they uh, really focus on improving the air tightness of the wind barrier. And here you can see the results of some projects where uh, a pressurization test was conducted during the wind tight stage. So these results give some confidence that it's possible from a practical point of view to improve or to realize the air uh, barrier at the outside. Uh, after this, uh, we also did some, some tests in Belgium, and we uh, end up with uh, similar results. This was the first uh, issue to be solved. Second is the hydrothermal feasibility, because moving the interior air barrier to the outside also involves a change in the hydrothermal feasibility. This is also something I don't want uh, to discuss in this presentation, but just to give some background which you can find in these publications. The main, the main question or the main uh, issue of this presentation is the durability of exterior tapes. Of course, if you move the interior air barrier to the outside of the building envelope, it will be exposed to much more severe conditions. And that's what we want to investigate here. So what's the impact of these extreme or uh, more severe conditions on the durability of these air tightness products. Together with uh, Redco, um, we uh, made a methodology to test the air permeability before and after uh, artificial aging. Uh, the artificial aging, which you can see on the left uh, picture here, was conducted at the laboratory of Redco. And the air permeability testing, which was done before and after the aging test, was performed in Leuven, at the laboratory of Kai Leuven, and also some parts uh, in the laboratory of Redco, which you can see on the right-hand uh, picture in this slide. The test samples 
look like this. So we had the um, squared samples uh, with a joint of two millimeter. Um, and the two parts of this sample was get together with uh, aluminum and wooden spacers. We uh, took two different uh, spacers be uh, because of their uh, different uh, properties. Aluminum has a higher uh, thermal expansion coefficient and wood has a higher hygric uh, expansion coefficient. So the behavior of these two spaces will be different. Um, we have samples of uh, 35 by 35 uh, centimeter and also samples of uh, 71 by 71 centimeter. And we have two different kind of tapes. First one, tape A, is Proclima, and the second one, tape B, is uh, Ilbrook. Um, so for the air probability tests, uh, we, have, we used this uh, test setup, straightforward box where we could uh, install a specimen with a clamping system. As you can see here, uh, we have two different sizes with a sample of uh, 35 by 35, but the, the, the measuring area is 27 by 27, and then a bigger one, 70 by 70. Um, so the, the principle is straightforward. We put, um, we pressurize the box and measure the pressure difference across the sample, and at the, uh, at the same time, we also measure the pressure difference and the airflow going through it. The permeability, permeability of the joint is calculated from the permeability of uh, a specimen without joint. Um, this is subtracted from the results with joint, multiplied by the area and divided by the length of joint. So as I mentioned before and after the air permeability test, we uh, did some artificial aging on the specimen. Here we base ourselves on existing uh, tests which are used for cladding systems. Um, there are, we used three different tests, three different uh, artificial aging tests. The first one is uh, purely on temperature. So for two weeks, we conditioned samples uh, at in six times. Six times we uh, did the schedule of uh, 24 hours at 70 degree, followed by 24 hours at 50 degree with a relative humidity of 30%. Then the second uh, cycle with different samples, all, all these, um, uh, all these uh, tests were done on different samples, so we didn't move from the first to the second. No, we took new samples for the second uh, test cycle, and there we, um, there we did temperature, rain, and frost, 12 days. So we, there are 40 uh, cycles of three hours at 70 degrees, followed by one hour of rain, uh, two hours rest. And then after, the 40, uh, after these 40 cycles, we did two cycles of eight hours at 50 degrees, followed by uh, 16 hours at 20 degrees. The final cycle is related to uh, UV, uh, UV uh, exposure. There for four weeks, we did 56 cycles of six hours UV, followed by four hours vapor exposure which is the most severe from the three. So this brings me to the results already. Um, the test results before artificial aging are presented here. So for tape A and tape B, uh, we see that it's very low. This is uh, 3.1 to the minus six cubic meter per hour per meter per Pascal for tape A. And for tape B, we have three, uh, 0.9 to the minus 7 uh, cubic meters per meter per hour per Pascal, which is very low. This is actually below the accuracy limit of our test setup, which we can say that these tapes, uh, as we expect from them, are working very well uh, in dry conditions. And on this slide, I will present a grid with the test results for the three uh, artificial test cycles. On the left, and side, I will present the results for the aluminium spacers on the right hand side, these of the wooden spacers. So for the first test, which is related to the temperature cycles, we see that the impact, because what I'm presenting here is the increasement of the air permeability as a result of the artificial aging is rather limited. We stay below two to the minus five cubic meters per hour per uh, 
read it per Pascal for uh, the four uh, tests. So compared to um, the dry conditions, you can see that it's still low. The increasement is very, uh, still low. Also for the second test, the temperature and frost cycles, you can see that the, there is no trend in which tape is performing better or which spacer is uh, um, acting different. We see the same small increasement, but not really significant uh, impact. And then for test three, which was the exposure of uh, vapor and UV, we have, uh, it looks like we have a higher impact for tape A than tape B, though it's still below six to the minus five uh, cubic meter per hour per meter per Pascal, which is uh, still very low. If we um, compare this to the dry result, we we have an increase, but it's still uh, uh, rather small. So this already brings me to the conclusions. Um, so we presented the methodology to test the durability of tapes uh, after artificial aging. We did temperature cycles, frost star cycles, and UV cycles. We have tested two different tapes, commercially available tapes, and the impact appeared to be smaller than uh, four to six to minus five cubic meter per hour per meter per Pascal. And to put this a little bit in perspective, I recalculate the results because uh, this number don't, doesn't say uh, so much. I calculated for a project we investigated with an exterior air barrier and I uh, multiplied the air permeability with the length and divided by the volume and then I have a share of an F50 value and as you can see here it's um, less than 0 0.003 uh, if it's uh, compared to an F50 value so compared to the 0.6 uh, which is the passive house standard we can say that the impact of the artificial aging test we did is rather small. The limitations of this study are twofold. So the tapes we use uh, have a high quality. Uh, these tapes are well known in, 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 um, uh, for, their, for their good quality. Uh, so it might be an option to also check different tapes in the market. Second limitation of this study is the application of the tapes in the laboratory. So all the samples were prepared by technicians in laboratory conditions, which is of course different from uh, on-site uh, conditions. So for further research, I would propose to test more different uh, products, taping products, which are available in the market. And uh, on the other hand, we would also recommend to do uh, further investigation on worse conditions of application. So at uh, freezing conditions, so applying the tapes at the samples during freezing conditions or on dusty samples. So. This brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. I would like to thank you for your uh, attention and I give uh, the micro back to the 